uh, and we've always had great conversations and uh, we'll have a, a lot of important topics uh, to discuss today. I was very disappointed I couldn't come uh, during these last four years. Uh, and so it's very exciting to be back. Now that was Bill Gates, less than a month ago, visiting his good pal, Xi Jinping. Now Xi apparently returned the favor by using the company that he founded, of course, Gates founded Microsoft, to launch a cyber attack against the US government. Now, despite the Fed spending, what, $15.6 billion on cybersecurity, more than the GDP of nearly, what, 75 countries? Chinese cyber spies were able to exploit a fundamental gap in Microsoft's cloud, enabling them to hack email accounts at the State Department and other agencies. But this really should come as no surprise because Microsoft has had a really symbiotic relationship with China for years now. As Forbes noted in a recent piece, in 2014, Microsoft became the first foreign company to offer public cloud computing services in the Chinese market. And in March of this year, uh, they would begin offering um, uh, OpenAI as part of its uh, cloud services. And get this, Microsoft gave the Chinese government access to the source code for its Windows operating system that happened back in March of 2003. Joining me now, Senator Tom Cotton, who sits on the Senate Intel and Armed Services Committee. Senator, our government relies on these tech companies for its communications. And of course, these tech companies rely on China for money. How is this a sustainable relationship, Senator? Well, Laura, it's not a relationship we should be in with Chinese communists or that some of our leading companies should be in. As you said in the opening, this goes back decades of failures of uh, trying to integrate our economy with China's. And you just saw the spectacle of the Secretary of Treasury going to China and kowtowing and saying that people like you and I are wrong when we say that we should decouple from China's economy so we could eliminate all the threats they pose to our safety and health and our prosperity. So I think Microsoft has some answers to provide here. You know, the reporting I've seen suggests that you couldn't uh, access these accounts in the government uh, just through like an individual key, but it would take something the equivalent of what you might call a master key, and that should have been secure at Microsoft. And how did Chinese communists get their hands on that? But there's also a broader point here that goes beyond Microsoft, and it goes to our government, to Joe Biden in particular. He continues to try to accommodate, conciliate, and appease with Xi Jinping and the Chinese communists, so we shouldn't be surprised that they continue to take these provocative steps. A few months ago, it was sending a balloon to float over China. Now it's hacking into the State Department. Yet what do we see? A continued flow of senior administration officials like the Secretary of Treasury, and soon it's going to be John Kerry talking about climate change, going to China to plead with China to help Joe Biden fulfill his goals. We shouldn't be surprised they're continuing to taking more aggressive, provocative actions against us and our friends. Now, Senator Cotton, without uh, Republican votes, the Pentagon could not continue doing what the Pentagon does. And we all love our military, that goes without saying. But given the fact that our government is clearly working to enrich China and grow the Chinese economy, how do we keep asking taxpayers to fund this Pentagon at this level? We're certainly not acting like a superpower when China is about to build this base in Cuba, and we apparently have nothing to say about it. So how do we ask the taxpayers in good faith to keep forking over the money? Well, Laura, what we need to do in the Congress and what I'm trying to do with others is make sure that we're funding the right things in the Pentagon, the right kind of weapon systems or the troop levels that are going to help deter China, deter their aggression, whether it's more submarines or modernizing our nuclear forces or making sure that our bases uh, in the Western Pacific are secure against China, Chinese attacks. What we shouldn't be doing is funding uh, the left's and the Biden administration's politicization of our military. Both in the Senate and the House, we've taken some steps to try to stop that. I hope we can continue to do more in the weeks ahead as we consider the legislation in the Congress, but we need to be funding the right things that are going to help our troops deter Chinese aggression against America's interests. Senator Cotton, I asked this of Senator Schmidt of Missouri last night. I'm going to ask you the same question. Do you think the military 
has become a hostile work environment to people of strong faith, Catholics, Muslims, Jewish uh, Americans, given the radical turn on racial and gender indoctrination. So, Laura, I've, I've heard anecdotes about that, some of them coming from people with whom I served, uh, you know, 15 or almost 20 years ago, I guess. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily pervasive, especially on the front lines and the company and the battalions and brigades. But clearly, at the higher levels, you have civilian political appointees who are very ideological, who are trying to take steps to politicize the military and to socially engineer it that we should not ever do with our military because we but need do you, our Senator, folk, our I don't mean to interrupt you, one thing. But, do you, but do you think a devout Catholic would be elevated to become a general in today's military? Like a, a, a very, you know, outwardly devout Catholic in this administration would be elevated to the general level. I do, Laura, and I think that that's the you case do. at most okay. levels as well. I, I don't, I, I don't doubt though that there are some ideologues in the Pentagon who are not just focused on religion; they're focused on race, they're focused on sexuality, and they're not focused on what's necessary, which is making sure our troops are ready to fight and win our nation's wars, and hopefully, therefore, not having to fight them in the first place. Yeah. Well, we have the Secretary of Navy who just um, said in, in a in a major um, address at the National Press Club that. We are completely outflanked on the naval side by China. I mean, they have, what, 50 more ships than we have. They have a much bigger shipbuilding capacity than we have. And yet our trade policy seems to be geared toward enriching China, Senator. So when I, when I, when the angle was about, you know, this doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense to, to people who are actually paying the bills here. Yeah, that's in part, again, because we have been outsourcing so much of our industrial base to China for 20 or 30 years. Um, you know, they've got shipyards that can do all of what American shipyards can do combined. That's got to be a real focus of ours. I mean, we cannot continue to let China to crank out more ships in a year than we can build in three or four or five years. That's all about bringing jobs back to the United States, all about developing skilled workers who are going to get high paying jobs in places like our shipyards that are going to be contributing to our national defense. Senator, great to see you. Thanks so much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.